Hello, gorgeous humans of Earth. It is I, Christina, here at Fit and Bendy in Los Angeles, and this is the first video in our Straddle and Middle Split series. Yay! Now, many of you may not be cheering because I know for a lot of folks, the Straddle and Middle Splits are kind of icky and maybe even a little terrifying. So we are gonna take it step by step and really prepare the hips through a whole series of exercises that is gonna work on our hip rotation. A lot of times our hip muscles get out of balance from our modern sedentary lifestyle, and we're gonna try to rebalance our hips. It's not only gonna make our straddle and middle splits a little easier, it's also just gonna make your hips feel better and be healthier and have better long-term health. So that's always a plus. Now we are going to be doing a very common exercise in the series, which is the clam. You've probably seen it lay on the side and open your knee, right? Jane Fonda. We're going to really break down this exercise to make it super, super targeted and absolutely optimal for what we're trying to do in a companion video to this one, which you can find linked below. All right, so feel free to watch that one before doing this video if you really want to deeply nerd out on your deep butt muscles, the muscles underneath your glute. All right, so if you have any knee pain, please stop. No knee pain during this exercise. Talk to a doctor if that's happening for you. And no equipment needed, so just meet me on your mat, all right? Okay, let's start on our backs. And we're gonna work on finding the muscles that rotate our hips. So just laying comfortably on the floor, we're gonna rotate the legs in and out. And as we do this, you really wanna feel the muscles in the hip sockets that make this rotation happen. Because of course, we can use the feet or the knees, right? But we're really trying to find the hip muscles. So put your hands on your hip bones and just make sure that they're not moving at all, right? Because we don't want this happening either. And then, what muscles do we use to rotate the legs out? Well, those muscles are deep butt muscles, right? They're deep inside the butt, underneath the famous puffy gluteus maximus. And then when I go in, I'm trying to find the muscle right in the front outside of the hips here. Like if I were to put my hands in my pockets while I'm wearing jeans, I'd be touching that muscle right in the front outside of the hips. And that muscle is called the tensor fascia latte or the TFL. It's a funny muscle name, but I didn't make it up. Now see if we can go back and forth. So now I'm squeezing my butt muscles. Now I'm squeezing my TFL, but TFL. And just doing this hello to the hip sockets kind of helps you check in and feel like, oh, I have a hard time feeling that on one side or like I have a really easy time going in but not out or vice versa. And then you kind of get to know what your hips need more of and you can start to tailor your workouts in order to bring them into a little bit more balance. Now from here, we're gonna bend both knees. And again, I'm just lying comfortably. I'm not trying to do anything in particular with my torso. And putting my feet pretty wide for this one, I'm going to do a windshield wiper. Now I love this exercise as part of my hip warm up. And we're starting with some big juicy windshield wipers. And I'm just letting my hips go, my knees go. So there's definitely a lot of help from gravity here, right? Where I'm just letting gravity pull my hips into this sort of yummy stretch. It's just a really yummy hello feeling for the hips. And you're noticing if there's anything cranky that you need to pay attention to. Then we're gonna come to center, glue the butt cheeks to the floor. They're not gonna move at all. And now I try to do that same movement without the hips moving. Very different experience. All of a sudden, there's a lot less help from gravity and it becomes more muscular. So now outside butt on the right, TFL on the left, outside butt on the left, TFL on the right, right? See if you can feel that. Sometimes it's easier if you want to just plant both feet and just do one knee at a time. So you can really take the time to focus on those muscles and feel them and just notice what's going on in each hip because they can both have their own delightful, unique personalities, right? Let's try doing just the left side. Notice if it feels any different. Notice what it needs, if it has anything that it's asking of you. And these exercises are really just a check-in that you can do at the beginning of your workout or to get to know your hips better if you haven't done rotational work for a while. From here, we're going to bring the legs into parallel. I'm going to take my right leg, cross it over my left leg into a figure four. And this is really an opportunity for me to start to feel 
that right butt cheek. So I'm using those muscles, those deep butt muscles to pulse this knee away from me while keeping the hip, this part of the hip, nice and relaxed. This ability to engage the butt while the hip flexors stay relaxed is key to a lot of the work that we're gonna do moving forward for both straddle and middle splits. So if you wanna spend some time in this position, just meditating on this muscle relationship, it will be time well spent. See if it's any different on the left side. So you can cross left over right and see what's going on on the left side. And again, I remind you, they could be very different. Very important here to notice also that there's no pulling happening in the knee joint itself. Really, we're trying to get a muscular engagement, a squeezing of the butt, and that's what's helping to move the knee. I'm not trying to move the knee from the knee itself. It's all happening in the hip socket, yeah? We don't wanna piss off the knees <laughs> for sure. So once we've done this quick check-in, we're gonna come on up to sit seating and Put the feet together. If you feel like you need more time warming up your butt muscles and saying hello to them, please check out my video on the clam exercise that is linked below because that is one of my favorite hello to butt muscles relaxing the hip flexors exercises. But if you're feeling like you've gotten enough of that, you can feel that your hip flexors are, you know, pretty relaxed and gooey. You can feel the butt muscles engaged. We're going to try sitting in butterfly. If you're newer to butterfly and you're looking a little bit more like this, go ahead and sit on some pillows or some blocks. Elevate your butt, lift your butt up off the floor. From here, using your arms for flexor support, we're going to try to press those knees down towards the floor by squeezing the butt muscles. Now, don't worry if they're more like right here. The important thing is that you can feel the way that the butt muscles create the openness in the hip. If you think about it, if I'm squeezing my butt to push the knee down, this is lengthening, right? This area is lengthening, the hips are lengthening. This is what we want as a precursor to those straddles and middles, all right? Now we're going to see if we can loosen this up a little bit more by working on our internal rotation because when we loosen up our internal rotation, it helps our external. So we're going to lean back on the hands, feet go nice and wide, and we're going to find those windshield wipers again. And we just have a little hello here, knees going back and forth, feel how that works in the hip sockets, checking in, and we're going to start or stop rather with both legs over to the left and I'm gonna pay some extra attention to this internally rotated right leg. I'm gonna start by squeezing this right butt which lifts that hip up, get that nice stretch through the front of the hip and then put it back down, come into that little bit of compression in the TFL. So I'm going back and forth between these two. If this feels really grouchy in your hips and they feel sad, the more that you lean back, the, the easier it's gonna be. The more you sit up, the more challenging it's gonna be. So you find that level that works for you. The important thing again, is that you're not feeling it in your knees. If you feel it in your knees, please maybe take a break and revisit it after you do some work on your knees. And I have another video for that as well, which you can check out linked below. All right, let's do one more lift and lower. And now we're gonna keep this right butt as close to the floor as you can get it. So you're maybe not like fully sitting on it, but you're kind of dropping it down towards the floor. And we're going to try to lift this right knee up and lower it back down. Now notice as I do that, I'm not letting my hip bone move at all. My hip bone stays in place. So this should really feel like work in that TFL right there. It, here's my hip bone. If you just go a little bit down now from the hip bone, right where your pocket would be, there it is. There's that muscle. You should be able to feel it working here. And we want to work that muscle because that's going to help it relax. It's going to, a lot of times we think that we need to just stretch a muscle to get it to relax. But sometimes, with, especially with this muscle, working it will actually help it feel happier. One more of those. And then we're going to drop it down. And I'm going to put my right hand down on the floor. I'm going to pick up my left hand. And I'm going to turn towards this internally rotated leg. We're just going to do a couple of twists here. As I'm doing these twists, I'm thinking of driving this right knee over to the left. So it's like I'm trying to uh, bring the knee that way as my body goes that direction. And that's, again, really squeezing and shortening this TFL. So you, you may feel sort of a pinchiness or a compression in here, and that's what we're going for. This incidentally is excellent if you have lower back pain. This is also a really good stretch for that. All right, let's go ahead and lean back. Couple windshield wipers. Oh, 
that right hip feels so nice now. And let's do the same thing on the left. So I'm gonna start by bringing that left knee down towards the floor. I'm gonna squeeze my left butt, bring the hip up and drop it back down. Just a little lift and lower here. Nice rotational work, feels nice and juicy. Very happy. Make sure that you're breathing. Just notice if it feels different than the right side. And then we're going to stop with that left hip down and we're going to lift and lower that left knee and go ahead and, you know, touch that TFL, make sure it's doing its thing. See if you can feel how at a certain point the whole hip wants to rotate, right? You want to go right up to that point, but not past it. So we're not letting that hip bone move. And for those of you for whom this feels like pretty easy, the more you sit up, the more challenging it becomes. So. You can also lean back. That will make it a little bit less irritable on the hip. So you can tailor this exercise to make it work for you, whatever level you want to work it at. All right, let's drop that knee down. I'm going to put my left hand down and pick my right hand up and I'm going to do my little twists. Now, do you see how this knee is kind of trying to push that way as I twist? That's going to help me get a little deeper into the twist and really get that deep engagement in the hip. And over time, you will find that you can move further and further, and this hip will really start to gain a little bit more looseness and flexibility. This muscle also, you want to have it be nice and strong. It needs to be strong for all the things that we're about to do. All right, let's do two more. And then lean back again. And one more set of windshield wipers. And let's go back to our butterfly now. Sitting up nice and tall, holding onto your ankles, elevating your butt if you feel like you need to. Try to press those knees down. Hopefully that feels a little bit more accessible because now that we've worked out that TFL, it's feeling a little bit happier, it's a little bit more confident, and it's going to give you a little bit more range so that your knee can actually get a little closer to the floor. All right, from here, we're gonna open out to our straddle. So. This is where we start to feel how this rotational work can actually be used in a straddle split. So don't worry about going to your deepest straddle just to begin with. Just come to like a nice, comfy, hello straddle. Sitting up tall. Again, feel free to elevate your butt if you're having a hard time sitting up tall, if you're feeling like you're down here. From here, let's look at this right leg and we're just gonna internally and externally rotate that leg. What's it even up to now? Now, internal rotation in straddle can feel a little like weird. So if it feels a little strange or you're not getting much movement, feels kind of clunky, it's okay. Just keep it nice and small so that we are, again, focusing on the hip, not letting the knee do the work. And just breathe. And over time, it will get easier because you're going to practice it. Let's check out the left side. How does that one do? Maybe it feels a little different. Maybe it's easier. Maybe it's not. Such an adventure, right? So see if you could feel how those muscles work in this position. TFL, butt. TFL, butt. Internal, external. Internal, external. And after doing a few of those, a lot of times what you'll find is, oh, it's actually easier to get a little bit deeper into that straddle. So now we're going to take advantage of this looseness we've created and just do a few stretches in our straddle. Now, to really anchor our straddle, those butt muscles become essential. So think about externally rotating your legs and squeezing those deep butt muscles here. So I'm really using these muscles to rotate the legs back in the hip sockets, bringing my thigh bones, my knees, my shins, and my toes all facing up towards the ceiling. And that's not going to change through everything that I do. So I'm going to lean to the left. And as I do that, I'm not going to let this right hip turn forward. I'm going to keep that right leg facing the ceiling using my butt. So the butt becomes a very important part of this stretch. And you'll notice that when that external rotation is happening, I'm getting a much deeper stretch all the way up the front side of the body, up through the obliques. It feels great. And that isn't going to happen if I let that leg turn in. So not only am I creating more strength and stability in my hips and better form, I'm also just getting a better stretch, more effective stretch. Let's take one more big breath here and then come back up to center. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So left arm, big reach out up and over as I lean to the right, check in with that left leg. I'm still squeezing that left butt. I'm still turning that leg. 
so that the top of the leg is facing the ceiling. And take a big breath here. Mm. Reach out nice and long, feel that long stretch. Deep breath, happy thoughts. Good. And then back up to center. Now we're gonna go forward and bring our body forward. Really important as we do this to not let the legs turn forward. If the legs turn forward and we lean forward, right, this starts to almost look a little bit more like a middle split. If you don't know the difference between straddle and middle, I got a video for that linked below, yeah? So what we want is to keep our butt bones solid on the floor and our legs and our toes facing the ceiling. So as I bring my body forward, I'm not letting my hip position change. I'm folding my body forward, but my hips stay seated. I'm still sitting on the floor. So I'm only coming as far forward as I can without letting this whole thing rotate. Does that take butt muscles? Why, yes. Yes, it does. So I'm really using those butt muscles to bring my legs back. And I like to do just this little sort of like Axl Rose style side to side snaky dance as I come down because it feels good and bodies like movement. And the movement kind of helps to loosen up the muscles and help your body feel safe in new positions. Good. You can also plant your hands on the floor and arch and round your spine here. And as I do that, I'm checking out my legs and I'm making sure that there's pretty minimal movement in my legs. So again, butt muscles working the entire time. I'm arching my back and externally rotating and then I'm rounding my back and I'm externally rotating. Let's do it one more time. Arch, squeeze those butt muscles, round, squeeze those butt muscles and then maybe you can go a little deeper and come on back up. All right, shake them out, pat them down. Thank you legs, thank you hips. So hopefully that help to find a little bit more dynamic and range in your hips that you can use. Practice, 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 practice. It gets easier the more that you do it. Identifying and being able to feel the muscles and understanding where they are and how they work is the first and most important step to getting everything else to fall into place. If you can't feel the muscles, if you can't use them when you need them, it's gonna be so much harder down the road where you're trying to do something hard and you need the muscles and you're like, I don't know where they are. So practice, practice. And I will see you here again next time. All right, drink lots of water, be nice to yourself, and as always, happy bendings. And like and subscribe. Like me. Please like me.